Hey everybody, welcome back. This week, I've got a hankering for something a little cool, so I'm gonna to go to the wine fridge and pull something from the WTSO bottle shop. Ah, here we go. Today, we're gonna to be opening up some sake, and I love sake for many reasons. One of them is because it's such a versatile drink. In the ancient times, sake was made in the wintertime after the fall harvest, so it was typically served warm. Uh, modern purists argue that when it's served warm, it kind of makes the alcohol stand out a little bit too much. So uh, you want to serve it either room temperature or chilled slightly. And this is a futsu shu, and that simply means a table sake. So it's a very accessible grade, very accessible quality level of sake, and it can be served both warm and cold. And sake is fermented to a certain degree, but they actually more technically say that it's brewed. Uh, the artisans that make sake call themselves brewers. The first stage is where rice and yeast are put together and they're fermented, but then there's a fungus that's added in the second stage known as koji. And that secondary stage with the koji is really what gives sake its complexity. There are 47 prefectures in Japan. Those are autonomous zones or regions. And uh, this one is made in Kyoto, which you probably recognize. This one here is 14.9% alcohol. That's pretty average for sake. And it's kicked up a notch with a sugar cane distilled spirit called Jozu. And they typically do that to give the sake a little bit more aromatic and flavor intensity. And sake almost always has that sort of like greenish yellow tint to it, which is really pretty. Got to hook up the camera guy. That's right. Gonna put your hand underneath the glass and one on the side like this. Uh, kanpai. Yeah, that's, uh, that's rice. No mistaking that. It almost smells like rice pudding. I always say this every time I drink sake, but there's a, that sort of like melon rind, like that green melon, like a watermelon. There is, like a, a, a honeydew or cantaloupe kind of rind. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's very smooth. Sake is typically lower in acidity, so it's not gonna burn as much as a wine does. It's not gonna zing your tongue in the same way. It's very soft on the palate. Um, there is some, trop I said it was tropical, but it's banana bread with walnuts in it. Yeah, so you can actually almost smell, right you can smell the nuttiness. For 14.9% alcohol, it's very smooth. And uh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of that, that melon rind in there and also some tropical fruit. And of course, uh, the vanilla rice pudding kind of finish on the end. Apparently there's a saying in Japan that sake never fights with food. And I think that means that it goes with virtually anything. But if I had to pick out some foods that would go well with this one, uh, especially when it's chilled for the summertime, uh, roll bar, shellfish, um, thinking cold, like that uh, Thai peanut noodle salad that you get at the supermarket with the ginger in it would be perfect for something like this. Dumplings. And lastly, I'm thinking like uh, sesame encrusted ahi tuna. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I didn't drink sake that much before I partnered with WTSO, but now I'm fully on board and I love it. Enjoy drinking it and I hope you're enticed and you will too. Uh, it's an affordable splurge. So come on over and check it out. I think you'd love it. If you're familiar with the WTSO Premium Wine Club, but not quite ready to commit to a monthly subscription service, the Bottle Shop is a great alternative. You can take tastings that we've done from prior months, um, sake and wine included, and mix and match your own set, put them together, and we can actually even do a private tasting together, which would be a lot of fun. So pop on over to the Bottle Shop, get your sake and anything else that tickles your fancy, and uh, give me a call when you're ready. Come pie. Cheers, everybody.